Hey everyone, welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, we're going to do some exposure blending using Photoshop's apply image tool. So we're going from this image to this one. If you want to follow along, you can find all the raw files in the description of the video. And now let's begin editing. So first off, the raw adjustments. Here we have the base raw image. And as you can see with the thumbnails down below, this is the middle exposure with this one being the dark exposure for the sky and this one the exposure for the shadows. The reason for me to do the exposure blending is pretty simple. With the base image you can see the sky is pretty much blown out while the shadows are kind of unexposed as well. So I could try fixing everything in a single exposure but the contrast between the shadows and the highlights is just too much. To start this, I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, which will give us some more base saturation. And it will also add a little bit of brightness to the image as well, but that's not important in this case. Then I'm going to adjust the white balance. I do think I need to slightly warm up the image, so let's bring up the temperature a notch. I really don't want to overdo it since I like that cold look, so that should be enough. Since we're going to apply some exposure blending, I'm not playing around with those exposure settings right here. Instead, I'm going right away into the appearance stuff. So I do want to add some texture and some clarity just to give this shot some more sharpness. And then of course, since I like the images colorful, I'm going to add some vibrance. Perfect. Now there is also one mask involved here in this image and that's a radial gradient. I'm going to apply one over the center foreground like this. Here I'm just going to add some more texture and some more clarity. Let's pump it up quite a bit actually. Perfect. Now with the base stuff and the masking out of the way, it's time to do a little bit of color grading in the color mixer tab. Here I simply want to bring down the yellow saturation and then push the green saturation a bit as well as the blue tones. Finally, I'm skipping over the split toning, but I want to head into the calibration tab all the way down in Lightroom and just bring down the blue primary hue and raise the saturation here. Okay. Now compared to before, you can see the changes are very, very minimal this time. Still, I do have to apply those changes to the other exposures. So I'm holding down the shift key and click on the last thumbnail to select all the images, then right click, synchronize settings, check all and hit OK. With that out of the way, let's click open objects to open them up in Photoshop. All right, in the layers panel, you can see I have all three exposures in one Photoshop file with the darkest exposure being on top. And here we have the middle image and on the very bottom, there's the brightest shot. I am making sure to activate the top two layers. Then I'm going ahead and I'm applying a layer mask on the second layer with that layer mask still selected and the layer deactivated I'm going to image and here we're going to choose apply image. The cool thing here is you don't need to change anything, just hit OK. And you can already see the layer mask has changed. So if we activate that layer, you can see we kind of got rid of those blown out highlights by simply masking in the dark highlights from the second layer. And this way we can work our way through the different exposures until we get a good looking result. Still, I would say this automatically applied mask isn't perfect, so I do want to adjust it a little further. So with the layer mask selected, I'm grabbing the brush tool by pressing B. And I'm also going to use a lower brush opacity. Let's try something around 50%. And then I am going to set the foreground color to black. And the reason for me to do that is I want the boardwalk, for example, to be a little brighter. This means I need to mask out the darker layer and just add back brightness to the boardwalk. I can also add brightness to the water surface since we don't have to worry about overexposure here. Now I do notice the brush opacity might be a bit too strong, so I'm going to bring it down further and I'm just trying to carefully paint back in some brightness where we need it. 
Maybe I do want to add some vignetting, so I'm going to change the foreground color back to white. And I'm brushing over the very near foreground just to make this area darker. And thus it kind of leads the eye more towards the center of the image. But I think that is looking very, very solid. So now we can try to do the same thing with the darkest layer. So again, apply a layer mask with the layer mask selected and the layer still turned off. Go to image, apply image. Again, just hit OK and activate the layer. Now with this one, you can see it starts to look a little bit strange. So we need to really adjust the layer mask in this case. Again, let's start with the black foreground color. This time I can safely bring up the brush opacity. And I'm just starting brushing over the foreground. We don't really need anything from the dark exposure on the foreground. So I can just safely brush over everything. The most important part is just in this very bright area in the sky. Here it does make sense to have parts of the darkest exposure visible. Maybe even at the very top of the image, again for the vignetting effect. So let's switch the foreground color back to white. And now let's drop the brush opacity. Just carefully make the top part a bit darker. And I'm working my way towards the center to get a natural looking blend effect. But that looks really, really good, I think. Almost perfect. So by just using the apply image tool, we have created a very good looking exposure blend. Next up, there are still some things I want to change with this image. So I want to continue by merging all those layers into a single layer. Therefore I'm hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E, which basically takes all those layers and merges them into one without destroying the layers below it. Then next up, let's add a little bit of glow. Therefore, I'm using a new layer. On this layer, I'm switching the blending mode to soft light for the glow effect. Then I'm using the brush again. I'm going to drop the brush opacity to around 10%. And I'm going to pick a color from the sky with a very slight blue color cast like this. Let's maybe make it a bit brighter. Okay. And then I'm just starting to paint over all those very bright spots around the leaves to add some kind of light bloom effect. That's looking pretty good. Maybe I could raise the opacity of the brush a little more just to get a bit of a stronger effect going on here. All right, that's much better. So I also don't want to overdo it. So let's just stop it with the glow at this point. Another thing I could try to improve the glow effect is to target the highlights and with the highlights selected, apply some Orton Glow effect. Now to target those highlights, I'm using the TK panel plugin. Here I can simply click a button and just target the highlights I want to target. For example, this looks pretty good. So with the lights to active, I'm going to select and then I'm pressing Ctrl C to copy that selection and Ctrl V to create a new layer out of this selection. Now with that new layer, I'm going to filter blur and here I'm choosing Gaussian blur. Let's pump up the radius. Just like that. Okay. And this, of course, just adds a little bit of blur to the highlights. And all I need to do now is to switch the blending mode from normal to lighten. So I think I can duplicate that for an even stronger effect. All right, that looks pretty good. However, I have the feeling those two layers are targeting the boardwalk as well. So I'm going to group them up. And on that group, I'm going to apply a layer mask. And again, grab the brush tool with the foreground color set to black. And then I'm just brushing over the boardwalk to get rid of any glow because we don't really need it here. Perfect. Finally, I do want to add a little more punch to the image and therefore I'm using a levels adjustment layer. Just let's play around with the mid-tones. I'm trying to make it a bit darker here. And the highlights as well, bringing it more towards the left side and thus brightening up the highlights. 
So that looks pretty good. Histogram looks good as well. So that's almost it. I am just noticing a sensor spot. So again, I'm hitting Control Shift Alt E to merge everything in one layer. And I'm grabbing the spot healing brush. And I'm just getting rid of that sensor spot. Okay, let's see. Maybe there's one more thing I can change. I do want to target the greens of the image and just make them slightly brighter. So for that reason, let's create a new layer and switch the blending mode to overlay. Then again, I'm using the TK panel plugin and on the color, I'm choosing green. That's looking like a solid selection, so I can apply this layer mask just like that. And again, with the brush tool and the foreground color set to white, I am going to paint over the green areas to just brighten them up slightly. All right, that looks much, much better. So at that point, I'm done with the editing. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.